Hi, welcome to my channel, Sewn by Lara. I am Lara. It's nice to have you here. So I am coming to you from my dedicated sewing room. It's a, a bit of a mess. I, I don't want to move around too much in my chair, not only because it squeaks, but uh, there's a massive pile of fabric behind me um, that needs some attention. And of course, if you've been watching my channel, you know that I have two places that I'm sewing at and, um, you know, taking fabric with me in projects and getting them done kind of little bit by little bit. Um, so anyways, uh, it's been a productive uh, few weeks. Um, I had a bit of a delay in um, uploading last week. The, the, there must have been too many people gaming um, in the barracks for me to get a really good signal, but I got a backup plan for that. So we'll see uh, if that happens again, uh, if I can work plan B. But one of the things that I got done um, last Saturday, uh, so that would have been the first Saturday of December. Yes, because we're the second Saturday now. Um, I got done like five or six projects actually, um, in, in a, you know, about a 24 hour period. Not that I stayed up 24 hours. Um, and one of those is, um, a gift from my mom. I think I had mentioned I had bought, um, this really lovely knit fabric from Gala Fabrics. Um, I had been in, in November, um, when I had an extra day off and uh, I saw this made up in a toaster sweater. So I thought, hey, why not, right? Um, so I've made this toaster sweater for my mom and um, hopefully it's going to be long enough in the arms because she's got um, long arms, but there is this nice band on it. So hopefully that will uh, take care of that. And I use the the bottom band option. Uh, I think that's version one. And this is size extra large uh, based on the bus measurements for her. But I think I could have sized down because I can fit this. Um, so, you know, um, I guess we'll see. Hopefully it won't be too sloppy on her. And of course I put in a label. Isn't that pretty? Uh, that's from Little Rosy Cheeks. Um, and uh, I've bought some labels from her, um, I think I got them earlier in the year, and have been putting them into my garments when I remember. Um, I'm kind of bad at doing that, at putting that in. So, so So I got that done. Um, I cut out, I think, as I mentioned, um, the lush double brushed poly or double brushed interlock knit. Um, and I made a title dress, um, which I have here beside me. Um, and I also made uh, bottoms and a Lego tank. And I will insert um, pictures of both of those. Um, I think I'm going to need to wear uh, either a gilet on top of the dress or um, some, as my grandmother would have called them, foundational garments um, because I'm noticing a little roll in a spot that I don't want to have a roll. Um, so hopefully um, those options will take care of that. But the dress pattern is great. It fits well. Um, you know, it, it lies really well over and skims the body and, uh, it's, it's a win. So, um, that, that's really good. Um, the Lego tank you've heard me talk about before, um, having made number of them, um, it's from itch to stitch and 
and again, this is, you know, a heavier weight um, knit. So it's very cozy. Um, and what I was doing, because again, the barracks have been chilly, um, is, you know, putting this on with the matching pants and then just throwing a cardigan over top of it and then finding that I was quite quite warm or warm enough um, that when there were drafts coming in they weren't they weren't bothering me too too much so those are a few of the things that I got done um, I also cut out a number of other projects as well um, some of them I didn't get done like the Findless and sweater um, I'm hoping to do that this week because again I've already sent one box of presents to my parents but I need to send the Finless and sweater and again this um, toaster sweater to them as well and hoping to have it to them before you know the rush comes but mom and dad got their parcel within um, it was seven days it was under seven days I think so so that's pretty good at this time of year Um, but I don't want to push up too late against Christmas. So um, the other thing, I think I had mentioned I had gone to Campbell River, the fabric land there, and they had, um, they have a closing sale going on. And, and I bought a number of things there from, you know, some really nice ponties to something called a Mayfair fleece. Uh, which is so yummy um, and things like that um, and so one of the things I got it's like a I'm gonna say it's it's an athletic wear piece um, the fabric it's got like the terry on the outside of it um, and on the inside it's just you know matte and flat um, and I've made a pair of foxy leg joggers. Um, and again, I had a little bit of trim left from um, a French terry that I had printed. This has got hockey pucks on it. Uh, so you can see a little bit of a hockey puck right there. Um, and that was from projects I had made last year. And so I just thought, you know what? I'll use that as an edging. It'll look really nice. I put... Um, I got to fix this. I, I didn't put buttonhole in there to run the um, shoelace through. Pardon me. So I didn't put a buttonhole through here, um, and I probably should have in hindsight. Um, so my, you know, shoelace is like as long as the, the width of this. So I'm either going to need to cut down the shoelace or insert holes after the fact and hope that it, it works. Um, part of me is wondering if I could um, put in like a grommet instead and if that will work just as well. I really don't want to um have to um cut into the fabric and uh, you know unpick if i don't have to so we will see about that one on the go um is a number of other things so i've got um a fabric order that arrived i actually had two fabric orders that arrived um one I wasn't expecting because I forgot about it. I had placed it at least according to the bill um, back in the spring. I want to say February. Yeah, February. Um, so it finally arrived. Um, and the plan for it, um, got two pieces here. Um, so the first 
is wide back cotton um, and and this is for quilting um, and I've made a I've wanted um, for a long long time to make a red and white nine patch quilt and so I started a number of years ago making it and I've had the blocks ready and done and so last yeah it would have been last year um, I actually put it all together, you know, and, and I used all scrap, like all scraps of red and scraps of white that I had in my, um, my collection of fabrics. And, you know, if you were to go in my quilting closet and look at the fabrics, you'll see that red is pretty decimated, um, as I was trying to work through and just whittle down, you know, fabrics that had been in there for 20 years, right? Um, I started quilting in 1991. Um, fell away from it for a few years and then really started hardcore again in 1997 and so you know I've got some old fabrics um, and and they're great um, in terms of the quality if you feel some of those compared to some of the fabrics the hand is very very different um, and it could be processes have changed um, but the quality you know certainly has changed and and I've got to wonder how well will some of these quilts hold up going forward compared to um, you know our, our predecessors quilts um, will they last a hundred years or not right um, there is a, a garment uh, manufacturer Stan clothing um, and he's on Instagram and he is taking old quilts and other old pieces of fabric um, he had a quilt that he took, it was from the 1800s, and, and basically cut up and made a garment out of it. And and it's beautiful. Um, you know, as a quilter, at first I'm like, right, don't do that. But when you looked at the quilt, when he laid it out to, to cut it, you could see so much of it was damaged and, and waste um, that his plan of repurposing that quilt um, into a like a work jacket was a much better idea um, right so um, good on him for for that but I look at some of the stuff I'm making um, and wonder will will these last for a hundred years uh, or more and and I'm not sure I'm not sure they will um, just due to some of the quality of the fabrics that are being manufactured right now so the other thing that I got is this fabric. And again, I ordered this back in February. This is called Belle Epoque, uh, Main Midnight by Stacy Peterson for Free Spirit. Isn't that lovely? It's just so yummy. So I bought this to make a dress. Um, I'm not sure how much I got of it. You know, they're saying I got 16 units. Um, so probably about four meters, I think. Um, so maybe a shirt dress, uh, would be nice out of that. Um, yeah, it's just so vibrant and, and lovely. And a lot of those colors are in my, in my color palette. Um, so because I can't remember what I bought this for, I started back in September. Um, I, I just got a little scribble book from the dollar store and I started writing in, uh, making three columns and saying okay this column is the fabric this is what I plan to make of it and you know this is you know some details about the fabric you know who manufactured it when I bought it the price that kind of stuff so I can go back and refer and and you know hopefully by the time a fabric comes especially if it's on back order or delayed for whatever reason um I can go, oh yeah, that's what I had planned to make. It still works for me or not, and then move ahead on the on the production part of that. So keeping with that, um, I put in an order last week from Dinky Do Fabrics. Um, they sell primarily quilting cotton there. Um, they're in uh, Vancouver or um, Pitt Meadows, BC. Um, so one of the um, greater Va Vancouver area 
uh, communities and uh, I, buy, I buy a lot of my quilt cottons from them just because they're quick and fast and and they're fairly local, um, you know, not that far away. So, so I picked up this Mammoth Flannel Junior. Um, it's in Periwinkle and I don't know if the color's coming across. So it's Periwinkle and Lavender. Um, so the lavender is the inside check there um, and I've got a number of meters of that and my plan um, with that is to make one of these in view C so that's view C right there um, and and it's just a simple you know jacket with a little collar and I thought it would look quite nice um, just in its simplicity to show off the plaid um, and again if I put a bit of a lining in there I can then um, show off kind of the beauty of the fabric um, but not also have it you know stick to me right because if you're wearing flannel you have to think about what your undergarment is going to be you're going to want something kind of slippy next to it right unless you line it so the plan is to line it um and i think i've got some lining in my stash that i can use that will work quite quite nicely so that's going to be a project for the new year the other thing that i got was um this piece of canvas um, is called Camellia Canvas Polar in Peacock Metallic by Melody Miller for the Ruby Star Society. So there's the print. And as you can see, it's very pretty. Um, it's, you know, the canvas has a good, a good weight to it. Um, you know, it, it will hold up. There is, yeah, there's not a lot of give to it, um, which is good. Um, and so it will do well for one of these Vogue jackets. Um, I was thinking view E, um, but you know, again, I look at view, uh, A with the kind of, um, balloony, I don't know if you can see it, balloony sleeves there, um, and go, huh, oh, that might be kind of fun too. Um. Or I could totally change my mind if I've got enough um, and and just go for making, um, I've got three meters there, I could just go and make a jean jacket, right? Um, and who doesn't want a really cool jean jacket? And because of how this is made, um, you know, when you look at this embellished piece here, you could add some stuff to that. Uh, or even to one of these flowers, sparkles, stuff like that, right? And really make it your own. Um, so that's kind of what I am thinking about doing with that. So um, some other projects that I've got on the go right now is McCall 7993. I actually found this in the sale pile because um, they were getting rid of uh, patterns and trying to make room for new um, the new collection coming in. Um, so I've made view C here and uh, love it. I made it out of um, this Mayfair fleece in a very peachy kind of color and Oh, it's so yummy and cuddly and and just oh good it's just so good so good so good so I want to make another one um, maybe another two out of some different types of fabric um, they indicate here that it's for moderate stretch knits sweater knits interlock velour and rib knits so I've got some rib knit um, that I think would work quite well I also have some velour um, that stretch velour that I bought a few years ago that I didn't get to making and I think now's the time to to do that up if I can find it um, because um, some of my fabrics are, are boxed up so I need to go and see if I can find what box I put them in 
and this is where I'm really hoping that my list making will have paid off when I box stuff. Um, I, I tended to put like what the contents in that box were and gave it a number. Um, so hopefully I can just find the box, pull out what I need and put it back. But we'll see. So that is uh, it for me. Um, I am just uh, about to go and do some more um, cutting out of some projects to have with me for um, you know the next few weeks that will take me up to the 24th of December because I am on duty for a week and that means that I can't leave that local area uh, and won't be able to come home so I got to think ahead and I spent yesterday making oodles of meals that I could take with me and put in the freezer at work and then reheat um, as I need them. And uh, that way I'm eating a little bit healthier than going to, you know, Wendy's or some of those fast food places where you don't necessarily know um, what what your calorie count is or it's way too much, as good as it might taste. So, um, but I'm also cutting out today um, a number of patterns so that I've got stuff to work on. So, um, and that reminds me, um, you know, again, batch cutting, um, some of your projects can be very helpful in terms of productivity, right? Um, especially if you're making like this McCall's pattern. I know I want to make three. I know I have the fabrics already for them. And so it can be quite simple to, you know, stack up fabrics um, and, and just, you know, go to town cutting them out with your rotary cutter. Or, you know, you do one at a time and, and you know, you take your pieces and you can either chalk trace the, the shape and, and then cut it out. Or, you know, just lay that piece on top, cut it out and, you know, kind of do it that way. Um, but I find that helps my productivity. And if things are, again, in the same kind of colorway, then I can just go zoom, zoom, um, which is which is really good. Anyways, I'm going to leave it over there and uh, hope you have a good week and uh, are sewing productive. Bye now.